Hey, Steve here. Someone asked me recently in a comment, what's the difference between using Lightroom's HDR functionality for blending bracketed exposures versus using luminosity masking in Photoshop? Now, I will say that even considering the fact that Lightroom's HDR is an automated process that basically guesses how we want to blend our exposures, it's actually pretty good for some very specific scenarios, like when there's zero movement in between your bracketed frames and for rescuing basic shadows and highlights in regular kind of daytime shots. However, I'm all about sunrise and sunset when lighting conditions are very difficult and high contrast. And there's usually some kind of movement between the frames, whether that's the waves of the sea, you know, the waves are different every time I click the shutter or the clouds in the sky moving across, um, obviously slower than the, the water, but still there's movement. Uh, you know, there's usually something moving in the frame. So this video is going to be a quick demo of why exactly I rarely ever use Lightroom to do my exposure blending. Now, if you're familiar with my older videos, you'll recognize this image. Um, I have used this example before in an introduction to luminosity masking. So I'll put a link in the description um, and I'll see if I can pop one up on the screen. Let's go fancy and see if I can make one of those little cards pop out with a link to that YouTube video. Um, so that will show you how I blended these two exposures together. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do here is just show you the Lightroom side and show you why it's not ideal for this specific example. So let's take a look at these two exposures. We've got a light exposure and a dark exposure. Now we can see here the water through the middle of the frame is actually uh, you know, it's quite a lot different between the two frames. So here is a lot longer exposure, so the water is a lot more smoothed out. Uh, smoothed out. Here the water is... Um, you know, it's, it's got a lot more definition and it's just different. Um, so let's keep that in mind. And now let's use Lightroom to attempt to blend these two exposures. So I'm going to activate both of them, just highlight both of them in the film strip down the bottom here. I'm going to right click, photo merge and choose HDR. So once this generates the preview. Uh, I'm going to run through some of these deghost amount values to just kind of show you how Lightroom is going to attempt to uh, to fix this uh, this issue of uh, you know the different amounts of movement in the water. Uh, so let's start off with none. So zero deghost. And now so this is the output of the uh, the HDR where Lightroom is trying not to um, not to kind of mix up and basically screw up the water in the middle here. So as we can see, this is really not a very, um, it's not a very HDR image at all, is it? So uh, let's see what's in the settings here. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a pretty ugly, if, you know, if I click auto settings, that's a pretty ugly, uh, pretty ugly HDR there. Now let's try low deghost. And so this is where it's kind of trying to blend the two uh, two waters together. And if I check this show deghost overlay option, it's gonna you know show us in red everywhere where it's kind of trying to to marry those exposures up and essentially low medium you know it's going to get worse as we go through low medium and high um, and yeah basically you yeah, know with this exposure uh, with this version on high it's is essentially using the entirety of one exposure here uh, you know it's not really blending those two exposures every in in those areas that are red uh, it's just using one of them because it knows that all of this area is uh, is going to get screwed up if it tries to blend it so you know we've got a choice of basically either using high or none so yeah let's for the sake of argument let's use high and then click merge 
So that's going to create an HDR for us. And that appears to have finished processing. So let's have a look at that now. And here it is. So, you know, here we can see it's, I mean, it's blended the two exposures. Um, the shadows are still pretty dark. The highlights are still quite light. Uh, considering the dark exposure gave us all of this nice color here to work with, you know, it's not really produced much for us here uh, in the HDR. So let me just contrast that with the, um, you know, with the version of the image that was uh, that I've previously processed in Photoshop to create the the merged finished image. And here we go. So you know, there's there's a lot more color and detail and light in the darkest shadows there. If you see the video that I linked to in the description, then you'll see how exactly I managed to blend the exact uh, parts of the water that I wanted to use. Um, so that's a you know completely manual process. Um, you know, Photoshop's pretty much required at that point where you want to start blending specific parts of two different exposures. Um, and you know we've retained the color in the sky there in the clouds. So that pretty much in a nutshell is why I personally prefer using uh, Photoshop to do all of my exposure blending, whether I use luminosity masks or just regular layer masking, depending on the shot. Uh, you know, like Photoshop, uh, Lightroom can give decent results for very specific scenarios, like I mentioned earlier, um, but it just doesn't give you that amount of control that you can get in Photoshop when you're literally hand blending the exposures with the brush, brushing exactly what you want, where you want it. Um, and then, you know, doing it that way as well, you get to develop your own style. Um, you know, you, you tend to find that over time, you make certain decisions over and over again that eventually evolves into a particular look that you are, you know, basically synonymous with. So, you know, really it's all about control and just getting the result, getting the image that you want at the end of the day. So yeah, with that said, hopefully this helps answer a few questions. And, uh, you know, I'm not meaning to bash on Lightroom. I love Lightroom. I use it all the time, just not for HDR. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful and informative. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to you next time.